This is going to be the ultimate guide on how you can self-host N8N. If you don't know what N8N is, it's basically like a Zap or Make.com alternative, which allows you to hook up all kinds of different APIs, tools, and services to create real custom automated workflows. And the reason why I like NAN over some of the other services out there is because it allows for an insane level of customizability and flexibility, which you just can't get in any other program. And there really isn't anything you can't automate. And the best part is, it's completely open source, which means you can host it on your local machine for free. And because this is the ultimate self-hosting guide, I'm even gonna show you how we can put this on a simple server so we can have our own instance of all of our workflows and all of our automations for relatively low cost. Before we get into it, if you wanna work with me in any kind of AI development project, make sure to book a free time down in the description below and we can talk about all that good stuff there. But anyway, let's get into the NAN self-hosted guide. So like I was mentioning, NAN is basically a workflow automation tool that is completely open source. I have a video up here which you can watch kind of going through how to use NAN and get the most out of it. I'm not going to cover that in this video. I'm purely going to show you how you can self-host it and how we can put it on a simple server so you can have your own version of NAN for relatively cheap. So to get this working on our own machine, we're going to head on over to their GitHub page directly on the NAN website here. And if we scroll down here, you'll notice we'll come to a start section and the only thing we're going to have to install is Node.js. You can get Node.js right here and it works for both Windows, Mac, and Linux. You can install the latest version of Node right here and then install it like you would any other program. I already have Node installed so I'm not going to do it but this is where you would install it. And then all we have to do is just inside of our command terminal run this command. So I'm going to open up a new command terminal typing in cmd or you can type in terminal on Mac and then we're going to type in npx nan. And what this will do is go ahead and download everything you need to run NAN on your local machine. I already have mine installed, so it was relatively quick. But once you're done, it'll open up. It'll give you this URL here on localhost 5678, which we can then control click into, which gives us our local version of NAN. And from here, we can add a new workflow and we can come into here and we can connect with any kind of app or service here to make whatever kind of unique automated workflow for our business and life. You can get real creative with this. There's a ton of different integrations here that NAN allows you to use. But one thing I want to mention though about the self-hosted version of NAN on your local machine is it actually doesn't work with all API webhooks. You'll notice if we type in the webhooks trigger here, basically if you're not familiar with webhooks, they're a simple way to connect basically any kind of API service. This webhook here is set to retrieve information. So whenever we make an API call, it'll get the information that's sent over to this request. Right now we'll notice that we're on the localhost version 5678 of our NAN instance. This means if we were to use something like Postman, so I'm going to head on over to Postman. Postman is a great tool that allows us to test and send API calls to different servers. And all we have to do is just make a new workspace inside of Postman and then paste in our URL with the get command to see if this automation is going to work. So if I come back over here and I test this URL and I head back over here and I click on send, you'll notice we actually can't test with any APIs locally. We're going to need a way in order to put our API on the internet so it can actually be used by other apps that are out there. So I'm going to come back into my command terminal, hit control C to stop this, and we're going to type in a new command. npx nan start dash dash tunnel. What this will do is start up a version of NAN, but on a tunnel server here. So you'll see this is waiting for tunnel. And then we get a tunnel URL, dangerous wasp 12. And then if we go back inside of our local host version here, you'll notice if we go back into our webhook and we open this up, our test URL is now on that tunnel URL, a dangerous wasp. So if I were to get this and then using this API configuration, I'll listen for this and I'll head over here and send I can actually send API requests to my NAN workflow from Postman. But now this is where things get good. We're gonna take this one step further. If you wanna self-host NAN completely, which means even in the case that this instance goes down on your computer, it is still working. We have to put our version of NAN on someone else's server that's gonna run 24 seven. So whenever we set up an automation, it'll always be accepting webhooks, accepting triggers and running our automations to do whatever we want. And the great part about 
self-hosting this with your own server is that you can run this as many times as you want for a really, really low cost. I think right now NAN offers a $20 a month package with a limited amount of executions and active workflows. And if you're anyone like me, you have a ton of executions and workflows going. So we're gonna have to upgrade to these higher plans or we can put our instance of NAN on a simple server, which will allow for unlimited workflows, unlimited executions. And to do this, we're gonna use a service called Render. Now I've been using Render over the last couple of weeks and it's quickly becoming one of my favorite apps to host just simple little servers and projects. And I'm gonna walk you through how we can deploy NAN on Render so we can run NAN as many times as we want. So to do this, you're gonna to wanna to log in and head over to your dashboard. And to get started here, we're just gonna to wanna to make a new instance right here and we're gonna make a web service. And we're gonna choose build and deploy from GitHub repository. But before I click on next here, we're gonna to wanna to fork NAN inside of GitHub. So head back on over to the NAN GitHub here. You're going to want to log in to GitHub. And then when you're in the GitHub repo, click on fork. This will make a carbon copy of NAN inside of your own repositories. You can call this repository whatever you want and make sure you choose yourself as the owner and then create the fork. I have already forked this repository, so I'm not gonna do it. But once you fork it, you can head on over to your repositories over here and you'll be able to see your own forked repository of NAN inside of your GitHub account. And this is all we're gonna need to do in order to get this to work. Once we have this forked inside of our GitHub account, we're gonna head back on over to render and then click on build and deploy from a GitHub repository. And then we're just gonna wanna make sure we're signed in with GitHub on render and then pick our NAN repository right here. I already have mine as NAN self-hosted, so I'm just gonna use this one and connect to it. And then once we have it connected, we're gonna wanna fill out some information to get this server set up. So to name this, I'm gonna name it NAN self-hosted dash one, but you can name this whatever you want. Pick the region that best suits you. I'm gonna go with Ohio. Ohio, keep the branch on master, keep the root on SRC. We want the runtime to be node. The build command will stay the same and the start command will also stay the same. As for the instance type, you can run it for free, which we're gonna do right now. But if you want this to run 24 seven around the clock, I recommend getting the starter plan for $7 a month. Like I said, this basically keeps a version of NAN on renders service for $7 a month, which allows us to run infinite amounts of actions and workflows and steps on our own instance. So once you do have some workflows you want to use, you can upgrade to the starter plan, but I'm going to stick with the free plan just to test this out for now. And then we're going to need to create some environment variables. The only one we're going to want to add right now is this node underscore version. And then we're going to add in the version of node that is accepted with NAN and that's 18.10 as of recording this video. So just make sure you add in node underscore version 18.10 and then create web service. And this will go ahead and make our own little version of of NAN for us on renderers servers. And this is gonna take a little bit of time, so just give it some time to do its thing. Okay, we have a ton of logs here, but you'll know it's live when we get this log here that says your service is live. So now if we head on over to our link here that we got for our server, we should just be pointed directly to NAN. There may be some errors or kind of warnings you get. You can just go right through those and head on over to your server. But from here, we have our NAN dev account that we can log into. So I'll just make some credentials and hop in real quick. We have our own instance here of NAN as we would have it on our local machine, except now it's hosted on our self-hosted server on Render, which means we can access this from wherever we want on any computer anywhere in the world, which is awesome. But there's one issue with this that we need to go over, and that's if we were to actually exit out of this tab and then we wait the 50 seconds, it'll actually spin down this server because we're not using any resources and we haven't paid for a plan to actually give us dedicated hosting for our server, which means every time we boot this server back up, we'll actually lose all the data that's on our NAN instance. Because what's gonna happen is it's gonna go to GitHub, it's gonna pull the fork, and it's gonna load a brand new version of NAN every time. So if you make an automation and then you forget about it and you come back to it in an hour, 
it's gonna be gone. Right now, you could just fix this by paying for a server and then leaving it up and running. But if there's ever a time where you have to spin down your server and spin it back up, you're still gonna lose all that data. So to fix this, we need to add two things. One, a couple more environment variables and also a disk. So first, let's head on over to the environment variables and let's add some more environment variables. And we're gonna add all of these environment variables that I have on the screen. I'm gonna have this down in the description below so you can copy paste it with all your information and put it in here, add everything as it says here. So the NAN editor base URL. You'll notice that we need to add a tunnel URL in here in order to put our server instance on the web, similar to what we did here with our start dash dash tunnel right here. We're basically gonna tell this server to put this URL on the internet. When we make and send webhooks in something like this, this URL here will actually be our self-hosted URL right here. And then we're gonna need to add in a couple things. So for the port, we can do 443. The protocol is HTTPS. The user directory is going to be this data here, which I'll just put right in there. Oh shoot, I did this wrong. Make sure the port is 443 and the host is just the URL minus this here. And then the base URL, tunnel URL, and the webhook URL is just the URL right here. So I can copy this and then paste this right in here. The last thing we need to do in order to get this to save is actually add a disk. And unfortunately we are going to need to have a starter server in order to get this to work. It's $7 a month, like I mentioned, but it's honestly well worth Worth it if you want to have your own version of NAN running on your own. I already have a server instance, so I'm not going to pay for it, but I'm going to show you on my other server of what you would do once you get inside of this. It's going to ask you for some fields to enter, and all we're going to want to put in is our name. So I just chose NAN data, our mount path. We're going to use that folder path that I put into the NAN user folder right here. So just copy this, put it into the mount path, and then you can set your size to one gigabyte. We're not going to need more than that. As you can see from my instance, I've only used about 77 megabytes and I have like 30 or 40 automations going right now. So one gigabyte is more than enough for what we're doing. And then once we have this disk set up here and we have our environment variables set, you can come on over to the logs and just click on manual deploy and deploy latest commit. Once you give it another five or so minutes to deploy again, you'll have your version of NAN fully hosted on renderer. You can use it as many times as you want, wherever you are in the world, all running on a cheap server, which allows unlimited automations and unlimited workflows. And what's great about learning this process too is this is how you can host basically any kind of project or API endpoints you want. I might have some more videos in the future kind of demonstrating how we can make some APIs and then put them on renderer so we can have a full API service for relatively cheap. You'll even notice if we make a webhook on our server instance of NAN and we go into it, our test and production URLs are both on our NAN self-hosted dash one on renderer instance right here, which is awesome, which means we can connect other APIs with our self-hosted server instance of NAN. So that's gonna wrap it up for my ultimate guide on self-hosting with NAN and just kind of learning how these servers work in general. If you learned anything new, make sure to drop a fat like down below. It really, really does help out the channel. And also leave a comment what you want me to automate or do next. If you wanna work with me in any kind of AI or automations project, make sure to book a free time down below. And if you wanna learn more on how NAN works, I recommend you check out this video here where I teach you how NAN works, how you can get started, and how you can get the most out of this tool. So I'll see you guys over in that video.